pop. So do you see where her spine is? So, boom. You displace it by replacing it. Oh. Then don't go around their head. Right here. So if she absorbs it by losing connection, then you have your attention. Same thing goes if it's in here. Maybe they start to pu push because they're like, oh, I'm going to fight it. Well, it's boom, you're in your knee. Your EDV angle is right through their mat. That helps motivate your kid. Okay, let's go. Here. 
right here. Okay, get your grip. Pull. And now, you see? I have people are gonna let go on you. You see that? I'm gonna come around this time. Boom. Pull. You're gonna let go. Come around, grab your chin underneath.
feel that? If you don't feel anything, I'll come and do it. <laughs> it doesn't take much. I just want you to feel that. Are you sure you all feel it? Okay, so that's my target. So when I come around and I go boom, I know exactly what I want to do. Boom. You see that? And so I have to practice my accuracy. I come around. Boom. Okay? Some of you are hitting the back and the shoulder. And again, the problem is unconscious training. Okay? Let's go. You don't have to, don't hit each other, but don't miss. Don't be unconscious. Okay? Go. I want you to know where that point is. Okay? And I want you to know that pop, but this time you're not going to do it. See? We're going to leave it there. Then we're going to unwind it, and we're going to go here. Check his height. Then unwind and boom. Roll. Check his height. Then hit a new angle. Boom. Check his height. Unwind. Boom. Okay, let's go. Oh, oh, right here. Boom. Right. Don't do that. Hi. Okay, just that part, go. That's not deep training, that's shallow level training. Okay? So, what we're trying to do is, you know, let's clean up some basic forms, but the mistakes we're making is because we're not conscious. You know how to do it, you're just getting sidetracked by something else. Okay? In early level mind training, is about concentration. Your mind is not, is not allowed to wander. Okay? You got it? And we're, our mind wandered, that's why we're not cutting. That's why we can't change stance. That's why we don't know where we're hitting. We don't want that. We want to bring some mindfulness into the training. Okay? All right, let's try it again. Change partner. Next time here. Boom, snap, boom. I'm going this way. You see where his head is going? So then this hit goes. All right. <clears throat> that's really different than I'm going here and then I'm hitting over here. All right. Okay? So cut, boom, boom. Magic. There you go. Any questions or comments? I'm really taking 
advantage of this time period. Uh, I do not run the dojo like it's Gold's Gym where you just come and work out because it doesn't work. Okay, so uh, let's take advantage of discussion and questions and things that are going on. Yes. Um, when we do the, the knee to the back of the head, yeah. do you plant the foot first? Uh, no, that second foot just comes around. Uh, there's, one, there's one error that happens. Yeah, it's very common on all of you. And every time people throw knees, they do this. They want to hit, and so they come up. And that jeopardizes your stance, because you're, you're up on one leg longer and higher. So when you, when you do the technique, and you grow free, this is, this is immediately where you go, okay? So when I have her mandibles, do you see that? And I have this chin strap, and she, you move where you want, you see? So if she tries to stand up, I'll bring the head back. If she tries to turn towards me, I'll bring the head the other way, do you see that? So you really want these control points right away. Then as I move, that's where her balance goes, right? So I go back and I'm throwing her into the knee. And my knee should really, not come higher than that. So if you look at my foot, it's about four inches off the ground. Okay, so it's just here. And she's coming back, she's gonna fall, and we can run, we can do whatever. But as a training principle, just remember the higher your legs come off the ground, it takes longer to come back down, and the more precarious your base is because your base support got reduced by one leg. It's always better to bring the target down, hit it on the way. variations in particular, I could see how you were still bringing bouquet in, Yeah. but I had zero of that whatsoever, yeah. it felt like, and it felt even like I was trying to do two contradictory things at once, so I know I'm not on the right mm -hmm. level, but I'm curious if you have thoughts on that. Um, so I think probably at the beginning level, we're having some problems with weight shift. So the beginner tends to move the foot before the weight has shifted. I don't mean beginner in a pejorative sense. It's just, I haven't figured that out yet. Uh, so what happens is they, they move too far. That's what happens. So I, I'm here like this, right? And then, and then they come up and then, see then this foot will move my center as opposed to I'm going to shift, you see that? I shifted weight and then I'm actually going around my center as opposed to my center moves and gets this new angle over here. And so uh, when you move your foot versus shift your weight first, you create way more space because your movement is linear. So that will kind of feel like they're not coming in, they're too far away, okay? And uh, of course there's timing, but Ultimately, you have to have that stickiness, which is all cheap, okay? Uh, because you can, if you have good eye key, adhesion, you can move them in as, as far as you need to. You could step the other way if you wanted to. You could move them in that far. But tactically, eye key, you really only need like an extra inch. It's not those four to six to eight inches. Okay. So just try to keep working, uh, get that weight shifting, and then always be on the eye, on the lookout for adhesion. Okay, that's key. I don't think we're gonna get the art right without the adhesion. That's something else. Okay. Anything else? And saying one of your more recent podcasts, you're talking about the shock and the kind of getting over that. Yeah. And my question was for um, in that process of getting exposed to that that repeated shock and when the strikes come through, how not to let that um, uh, be a negative experience so that you're not getting the positive benefit of it, but you're actually getting worse. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah, so I, I did, there's a, so the last podcast I talked about how um, 
martial arts will do some sort of desensitizing to your body. And that was part of why I chose the strikes because James would not take the kemi when he felt the owie in, in his wrist. But that's precisely why you would want ukemi because then the owie wouldn't be there. But so the pain is motivating you and preventing you from accessing your wisdom, what is ukemi? I don't know, I can't access it. The pain is telling me, forget all that, focus in on that, okay? That pain in the nikyo is no different from the boxer who, who can't do bob and weave because they're blinking every time the strike comes at them, right? So there's many ways that you are desensitized, and we did, we did some desensitized training here tonight with the two strikes to your face so that our ukemi can kind of get used to this. Um, but in an earlier podcast, I mentioned that that kind of training, if you are not doing it in the right kind of environment, it, can, it will just be abuse. You're basically being treated violently. Do you get that? So it, uh, it begs the question, what is the right kind of training? Well, it has a lot to do with you, the deshi. If you, uh, if you come to your training in a very guarded way, would, I would, in a way that I would ultimately call non-committed, you're holding back. There's aspects of your person, of your life, of your culture, uh, of your reality that you just do not put on the table, okay? And basically those actions, that action is all about, I just have too much homeostatic energy for my current self-identity. So everything that now you're experiencing that might cause change is taken as a threat. It'll feel threatening, and you will spark the fight or flight response. You will not generate the humility that another deshi might. And there's no way around it. If you're, if you go well, if you would go more gentle, it doesn't work. It's not. That's not going to work. Um, if you would go, uh, just keep beating me. No, it doesn't work either. You just turn into a, a violent asshole. Uh, so it always comes back to getting out of our own way, right? Opening ourselves up, exposing ourselves to the training, not leaving things on the table. Um, and I'll go, I'll give you this caveat. Everyone here might say, well, that's not, that's, I get it. I get it when it's violence upon me. But violence is nothing more than that transgression against that static homeostatic energy. So if you come into the dojo and you train in a very guarded way, you hold back a lot, anything that is going to threaten that, anything, it's going to feel like a threat, it's going to actually rub you wrong. It could be for, it could be as simple as so-and-so said this to me. It, it could be as simple as um, this teacher doesn't allow variation on the mat. Fuck this place. Do, do you know what I mean? All of that stuff gets threatening, threatening to you. And what you're looking at really is a kind of uh, micro level of the IT resolution. You either have a chance to put it in play or you can practice resistance. Do, do you get that? So, um, the, the ITS, when we, when we first started, uh, people are like, this is fucking killing me. What do you mean I gotta make a school schedule? Can I just show up when I want, right? And then, but the person who's like, hey, I'm in, and I'm here to train with you, and if you say that helps me, I'm gonna go for it. And then everyone learns, because we all see, this, is a difference between training to cultivate commitment or training to maintain a lifestyle of convenience, right? And uh, it rubs people wrong. It does. There's no difference, right? It just does. I've had, yeah, what are you reading? I've had people who could not keep their ITS, right? 
They're constantly, I can't, I can't make it, I can't make it. Uh, you can tell it's bothering them. They always, they feel guilty at first, then they get angry at you. This is not an IQ resolution. This is a, a triggered event. And then you, you will all say to them, hey, look, you know, you can't keep your ITS. We have a two day minimum. Why don't you drop down to two days? Oh my, that's, that's fucking it. That, fuck this place. I'm quitting. Where realistically it was like, you can't keep the four days. Maybe you can keep the two days. That wasn't the problem. The problem was the resistance. The problem is that this is a different way of, of being and it's against how I am. Right? So don't, don't worry, you know, you're being worked on at all these levels. It's just that violence has got its own little special place because uh, we've been evolved to not like it. Okay? But when it comes to the way our ego works and our, our, our transformative process, it's happening anyways. You're being rubbed wrong. My goal, my, my suggestion is, if you're going to be a Deshi, and this was the point of the last podcast, you don't stop at being rubbed wrong. That is not treated as your proof for why you should do what you want to do. That's where your training is supposed to happen. That is very much like he comes in, right, and I'm here like this. Do you see? This is where I'm supposed to learn how to reconcile that conflict. Do, do you get that? So, um, those are the signposts that you're supposed to follow. As a deshi, in an art of reconciliation, it's supposed to apply to us on the mat, off the mat in martial applications, in daily life, in architectural, tactical architectural architectures, and in my relation to myself, okay? So don't wait until you get pounded. You can already tell, really. I can already tell who's not gonna like to be touched in the face. Do, they will not like it. How do you know that? Because they're having problems with the ITS and the minimum training requirement. And, you know, do you keep talking about daily training? And I'm not sure this is the, the uncommitted, which is, I don't want you to, to look at it as a value judgment. It's just an equation. The uncommitted is training with resistance and not to reconcile resistance. And everything is operating at that level. They, they just might not want to admit it, but they're going from one conflict to the next conflict to the next conflict to the next, let's hope this works out for me. I hope this is, you know, there's always a greener pasture over there and over there and over there. There's not supposed to be that. You're supposed to come in and I'm supposed to be able to reconcile this energy. How? Not by changing you, but by changing me. That is the principle of IQ. Okay. So if you pay attention, I, 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 as my training, I will do desensitized training for those who can take it. And then for those who don't, and you might do a wake up call. Look at all this resistance in you. But they never feel my technique. I don't do my technique on them. It's, it's just going to start a cycle of, I'm pretty sure that guy hates me. Holy fuck, he tried to fucking kill me. He's probably jealous. You know, he says I won't kowtow. It's like, don't do, join us, be here. Right? But I think you're, we're missing the point when training operates at that level. We're, not, we're making Aiki something very superficial. Something the founder clearly said should not be done. 